Frickin' Bixby. Don't you hate that? Every time you hit the wrong button on your phone, that Bixby comes up. It's like, who even uses Bixby? So anyways, enough of the Bixby. Today I want to do a video on the uh, Tillotson carburetors. Since they come on a lot of these old chainsaws, pretty much like the main carburetor they used back in the day. And uh, I gotta rebuild this Pioneer RA carburetor, which is a Tillotson HL series. And so I thought, why don't we do a fun little video on the history of the Tillotson carburetors and sort of show some of the different types of them and um, we'll do a little rebuild on one too. So yeah, let's check it out. Hey guys, it's a beautiful Saturday morning and I was gonna work on the old Pioneer RA here that we're rebuilding, doing a restoration on to raffle off to um, raise some money for my buddy John. And uh, we got to rebuild the carburetor for it. So I thought, oh, well, let's do a little history on the Tillotson carburetors. Because, geez, they put them on everything back then, it seems like. And they still use them today. So, yeah, so here's the carburetor that goes on this RA. It's, the, uh, it's one of the HL series. See, this is an HL 122A. But yeah, they made like all different kinds of configurations of these things. Well, the Tillotson Company started in 1914 in Toledo, Ohio. And they started out making carburetors for cars and stuff like that. Old stuff like this. Probably even older. In the teens. And so yeah, they started making carburetors for cars and stuff like that. And then they... In the 40s, I guess, they they uh, evolved into making diaphragm carburetors, which basically revolutionized the small engine market, made it to where, you know, these small motors like on chainsaws and things like that could be ran in any position, you know, up upright, sideways, upside down. Before that, all they had were these float type carburetors which is what this guy is. So in order for it to run right, you had to keep it level. Otherwise, if you turned it on its side, you know, it wouldn't work, of course, because all the fuel would run to one side and then it wouldn't work. And so what they did was they came up with these diaphragm chainsaws that run off of the um, vacuum impulse off of the motor, basically. So see this little hole here? It gets the vacuum impulse from the crankcase, and then that's what moves the diaphragm inside the carburetor. And most of them had two diaphragms, but some, some have one, I'll show you. But one is the fuel pump side, which, which pumps fuel, and then the other side is the metering side, which regulates how much fuel is being fed to the, to the carburetor, basically. You know, I'm not an expert on carburetors. That's basically the gist of it. So see here, I'll show you. I'll show you what's inside this guy. So this is what they had before. They had diaphragm carburetors. I'll show you what it came on. And so yeah, some of these older chainsaws, they had these. So you couldn't flip them on their side because they didn't work. And that's why you'd see those big, like the big two-man saws and stuff, they'd, they'd have the bar that you could flip on its side instead. So see, there's the float. So it's just a float type carburetor. And what they use those on, over here, was like this old David Bradley chainsaw. It's an early 50s chainsaw, so this guy, you had to run it upright. You couldn't tilt it on its side. Although, this Titan chainsaw was sort of ahead of its time because this is an early 50s chainsaw too, and it actually has a diaphragm-type carburetor on it, which is also a Tillotson. But see, this one just has the one diaphragm that pumps the fuel. And then it also um, is gravity fed, which 
Now that I think about it, yeah, I mean, I guess that would, yeah. I guess you could turn this chainsaw on its side, theoretically. And so, yeah, that's when they were starting to get into the, getting into the diaphragm type stuff was, you know, the 40s, early 50s. So, yeah, this one has the diaphragm, just a single diaphragm carb. And then this is a float style carburetor on this guy, so you can't turn it on its side. And then, you know, they put them in everything, like this big old home light, it's got a Tilly in it. McCulloch used the Tillys. Pioneer used the Tillys. See, there's another HL right there. The HL was like the really popular series that you see in a lot of these. So it would have an HL and then some designation after that, depending on the application and configuration. And then yeah, even the even the old pot or the old Johnser is they got a Tillotson in there. That's a little bit later unit. So yeah, the old Tillotson carburetors made it all possible. Cause yeah, before like this two man saw, they made they had to make the whole bar to where you could flip it on its side because you couldn't turn the motor over on its side, and so they had to come up with all this apparatus to flip the bar on its side. See, there's another Tilly carb right there on that home light. Steel. They I don't know yeah I don't know if the steels use Tillotson. I can't remember what brand they used. Maybe Tillotson, I can't remember. But yeah, most of the old chainsaws use Tillotson, and then in the later model stuff, they started getting into like Zama and, and uh, oh, what are the other ones? It escapes me now, but yeah, Zama and, and uh, the other stuff. So yeah, most of these little chainsaws, they had the Zama and the, and the, what is that other one? Ah, uh, it escapes me. So anyways, that's a little bit of the history. So yeah, 1914 they started making carburetors. And then yeah, the Tillotson is the one that invented the diaphragm carb. So the one we're gonna rebuild is this guy. So let's take it apart and see what it takes to freshen one of these up interesting on these Tillotsons too it's like they're all basically the same like these HL ones they're all basically the same body but they just put the um, jets in different spots depending on the application so see this one has the high jet here and then the low jet is over here on this side see but see this there's nothing in this hole and then like this one this is a McCulloch one and it has the little wheel on it that you can turn you can adjust the idle with your fingers and then see this one has the high here and the low on that side and then nothing on this side but see it's also it also has holes in the front to where they could put the um, jets there too if they wanted to and then this is a home light one it has the high-low jet on one side, but see, it has the holes for it on the front. So yeah, they're just sort of a universal carburetor. That's the old one. So anyways, yeah, let's rebuild this one. So yeah, let's take a look at this Tillotson HL. So yeah, they're pretty, pretty cool little carburetor, pretty simple design. So here's your low jet, and then your high jet on a lot of these um had little finger finger levers on them so that you could adjust them on the fly you see a lot of those old videos where guys are cutting and they'll reach in there and richen it up or lean it out right while they're cutting it's pretty crazy so let's take out the high jet take that bad boy out Take out the low jet. There's the low jet. And then here's your idle. 
your idle screw. And then here's our inlet. And you gotta watch out on these, these plastic inlets. I had one that was warped. And so like the, it was warped and so it wasn't sealing very well. So you gotta watch out for that. And then there's a screen in here and a gasket. But the kit should come with the gasket. Oh, the screen came right out. See, there's your little screen. Ooh, this one looks pretty clean inside. And then just take note of where your positioning is for your gaskets and stuff, so because there is a sequence. Okay. Let's take a look. Yeah, see this one's not too bad inside. There's our diaphragm. So see the gasket goes on and then the diaphragm. Oh yeah, that one's stiff as a stiff as a carp. Stiff as a brick. And that's what keeps them from working. See, they get stiff and then they won't move anymore. And that's why a lot of these poor old car our poor old chainsaws ended up in the dump. So there we go, we got her all cleaned up. And then say, so yeah, if you notice on this one, so the metering arm is supposed to be level with the floor of the carburetor. And see, this one's a little high. But we're going to be replacing the needle and seat anyways. So. And this one has a really long screw that, that holds the metering lever in, but some of them have a little screw right here. But this one's a real long one like this, so let's take it out. The long pin. So there's that. And then see some of the, so see some of the metering levers on these are just flat. And then I think the ones that come Oh no, this one's a flat one too. Some of them are flat, and some of them have the little forks that hook into the seat or the, the needle, but this is the flat one, so this is gonna be the same. So this kit comes with all new stuff. And see, here's our spring that goes in the middle here. Right, whoops, goes right there. And don't, don't let it fly away because you'll never find it again. Oh, see it tried to shoot out on me already. But anyways, that goes underneath the metering lever. So there's that, there's the old seat or there's the old needle now i just got to find a socket that fits this there we go sheesh finally found a socket that would fit in here it's 5 16 but you need like a thin wall socket here we go this works i don't know Okay, there's our seat, and yeah, this is the kind that has a little O-ring in the bottom of it that the needle seals against. So let me blow this out with a little air. Okay, now, and this is the Welch Pillug, which I've never actually messed with one of those, and I really don't want to, so most of the time you can get away without fooling with it, but if you want to do a real thorough cleaning, there I got that rust off of there, 
you can knock that out and blow the passage out behind that but I don't want to mess with that so let's see what we got in the kit here a little Tulipson kit couple of washers so yeah this is the same kind with the little rubber thing in it with a little rubber seat so we'll just put that guy in there snug her up Then comes with a what did it come with? See there's our new stuff. Oh wow, it came with two different that's interesting. Two different levers. It came with the one with the fork and then it came with the flat one. So I guess we'll use the flat one. Okay, yeah, that seems like it's better. She moves a lot freer. That other one was sort of tight for some reason. And so yeah, so see this one, the level's just a little bit low. So we just need to pry this guy up a little bit. She's level. Maybe just a little bit higher. There. Perfect. I think that should work. Okay, now we can put the diaphragm on. So see this guy. So you got your Oh, they got the, Oh, they already got it all situated on there for me. Nice. So this goes here. And then this goes, ooh, let's clean that up a little better. It's sort of nasty. Hold on, let me clean that a little better. There we go, that's better. So this goes here, like that. That's old junk. Okay, so yeah, this goes first. Like this. Oops. Like that. And then this guy. Oops. Oops, no. Come on down. Oops, hold on. Jeez, figure it out for God's sake. Okay, here we go, here we go, like this. And this goes like this. There we go. Put our screws back in. Okay, then make sure our screen's clean. Stick that bad boy in there. And then we gotta get our new little cork gasket right here. And then this. this on and then you can position that once you get it 
closer to putting it in. Position it where it needs to go. Because that can go anywhere, any which way you want to clock it. Okay, and we got our high jet, which goes right. Where did that go? Oh, yeah. Here. Turn it in until it just seats, but don't crank it too hard. Just until it touches. And then we'll go one and a half turns. We'll go half, half, half. So that's one and a half. And then same with the low jet. Turn her in until she bottoms out, but don't turn it too hard. And then we'll go half, one, half. Okay, there it is. She's all rebuilt, ready to go. Nice. That's going to be a little honey right there. Cool. So there it is, guys. The Tillotson carburetor video. I hope you found it enjoyable, informative, at least entertaining. And so anyways, that's it for now. Remember, friends don't let friends borrow chainsaws. And we'll see you on the next one.